I hope you all had a fantastic Christmas and a fantastic new year, and there's no better way to kickstart this new year of content on the channel than with Knights of the Old Republic Remake. Now, if you've been in the remakes stratosphere lately, you may have heard a load of leaks and rumours and scoops coming out. A big YouTuber by the name of Mr. Matty Plays, a huge KOTOR fan, recently released a video claiming that he had some inside scoops on the development of Knights of the Old Republic about things that are going to be implemented into the game. Now, if you guys know me at all, you probably know I don't really like to make videos on rumours, leaks and things like that. But it is really kind of making the rounds at the moment and being a KOTOR YouTuber, I kind of feel left out that I'm not even commenting on it. So what I wanted to do in this video was talk a little bit about the rumours that are going around in this regard because Mr. Matty isn't the only person who's heard things about this game's development and I thought I might as well corroborate some of the things that he's saying and just try to build a little bit of excitement for the game within my audience. Now the thing that is making the rounds is that Mr. Matty has claimed that Aspire are looking to change up the combat system for Knights of the Old Republic Remake. And I have also heard the same thing from my let's call them sources. And I think as we should set expectations for this game, I would set it as don't expect the exact same kind of turn-based system from the original game. However, I think what's going around on the internet is a little bit disingenuous in the sense that they are completely changing the gameplay, or modes as they're calling it, and trying to turn it into some kind of God of War, Nioh, third person hack and slash game, which from my knowledge isn't true. Now yes, I personally have heard about God of War being a heavy inspiration for this game, but that is just it, an inspiration. I haven't heard anything about Nioh 2 though, that's a new one, and honestly that doesn't really make much sense. However, when it comes to God of War, as I said, they have taken inspiration from it. That does not mean they are looking at the God of War combat system and going, right, how do we implement this into the KOTOR remake? And this is where I think a lot of people are being misguided by media outlets and all of these companies that are trying to make a quick view on what Mr. Matty has said. From what I know, the inspiration is actually the way they are presenting the game cinematically through a mixture of gameplay and cinematic storytelling. If you've played God of War, you'll know that it is an extremely seamless experience from beginning to end, and I think this is what Aspire are looking at to try and give to the KOTOR remake. Knights of the Old Republic is extremely dense on its storytelling, and when it comes to the base storyline, there would be no better way to tell that story than from a cinematic angle in the way that God of War chooses to do itself. But when it comes to the actual combat system, God of War doesn't really translate well into what Knights of the Old Republic did. And no, I don't think Aspire is silly. They know that one of the core fundamental things of the Knights of the Old Republic games is the party-based combat system. It's being able to plan your strategies and being able to implement them in real time, and God of War doesn't do this at all. God of War is a very traditional over-the-shoulder hack and slash video game, and while this may work for something like Fallen Order, it certainly doesn't work for Knights of the Old Republic. Now this is speculation from me, but I would very much expect the game to actually be something like Dragon Age Inquisition, with certain God of War-like elements in its presentation. If you've played the Dragon Age franchise, you'll know that the first game, Dragon Age Origins, which is one of my favourite games of all time, had the exact same combat style as Knights of the Old Republic, but as they went further into the franchise, they decided to branch away from that and make it a little bit more hands-on. When they got to the third game in the series, which is Dragon Age Inquisition, what they had was this kind of paused-based hack-and-slash game where you could control your party physically, you could control your abilities and you could control their attacks, all of these kind of things, but you also had a pause system that allowed you to plan and do things strategically in the way the original did, while also having the hands-on style that they were going for with a new kind of design. And I think the fact that many of Aspire's hires are people from Bioware, who have worked on the original Dragon Age games in the past and Dragon Age Inquisition, and I think it's quite likely that this is the kind of style that you're gonna find in Knights of the Old Republic Remake when it's unveiled. 
Additionally, I think Final Fantasy Remake is also another big inspiration from them on how to actively translate a game that was very slow paced, very much about strategy than hands on fighting. And I think they're trying to figure out how to create their own style of gameplay without directly stealing from another one and trying to keep it relevant at the same time to how the original game was. And when the game is unveiled, I would be very, very surprised if they have completely done away with any of the party-based or strategic kind of combat systems. It just wouldn't make sense because it's an integral part of the game. And I wouldn't want it if they turned it into Jedi Fallen Order KOTOR Edition. And to be honest, I'm almost certain this won't happen, but hey, who knows. Now let's talk about some of the other rumours that are going around that haven't really made the rounds in the way that the combat changes have, and that is music. Now I personally haven't heard anything about music in this game, so this is speculation on my part, but you can be almost certain that Jeremy Soule won't be coming back for the KOTOR remake due to allegations against him, and it seems like a lot of companies are distancing themselves from him sadly. And additionally, I don't expect Mark Grisky to score this game either. Mark composed the entire score for Knights of the Old Republic 2 and much of the Old Republic MMO, but if you follow Mark on Twitter you'll know that he seems quite disillusioned with the industry at the moment, especially Lucasfilm, and he also seems to be looking for new jobs as of very recently. If Aspire were intent on re-recording the entire soundtrack, they would probably have a composer in mind and they probably have even reached out to this composer and established some kind of communication there. So if I was to put my money on any composer in the industry right now that will probably make the music for this game, it would be Gordy Harb. He composed a lot of the Old Republic's music with Mark Grisky. He also composed the music on Battlefront 1 and 2, which was brilliant. He composed the score for Jedi Fallen Order, and he seems to be the general favourite for when it comes to big budget Star Wars video games right now. So he's the name I would expect on this game. The next rumour, which I have also been told about, is minigames. Apparently Swoop Racing and Bazaar will be in the game, and to be perfectly honest with you, I, I don't think this one is a scoop or a leak or a rumour. Not only is Swoop Racing actually pivotal for the initial parts of the story, I think it's pretty obvious that these things will come back. Like I said, I've heard the same thing from my sources, but to be perfectly honest with you, I don't think this is something that's deserving of a big rumour because these systems were pivotal to the original game and what made it unique, so you can fully expect them to be in the remake. The other rumour that Mr. Maddie speaks about is no major changes to the cast besides things such as age and species. I haven't heard anything about this, I haven't actually heard anything about the story or the characters or anything like that. However, I think this one was pretty obvious. If they changed anything fundamental about the game, they'd have an uproar in their hands, and I think when it comes to side characters and things that aren't relevant to the main storyline, you can do what you want with them really. And actually, for me personally, clarifying the ages of many of the characters would be a good thing when it comes to being a S Star Wars YouTuber and wanting to know about the details and the lore of these stories. One thing that is very ambiguous when it comes to KOTOR is actually the ages of many of the characters. You'll be surprised about how many times I've gone into long discussions with people about how old certain characters are and the age gaps between certain characters. And if they are keeping this game as legends and within that legends storytelling bracket, it would only just add upon the original story just to give us some expanded clarification on certain aspects of these characters. And the last thing that Mr. Maddie speaks about is new content. Now, I have also heard about this, but it is just that I've heard about it without any real details. I've been told they're planning on implementing new stuff into the game. This may be extending certain storylines, this may be extending certain side quests, it may be new side quests, it may be new characters, companions, items, all that kind of stuff. And I do know that they don't want to keep it one to one with the original game without a single change. After all, this game is going to be much bigger than the original. And it has a ridiculously high budget, so you can fully expect there to be new content in the game to keep us all surprised while also enjoying the things that we loved before. Now, I also have a little bit of information that Mr. Matty didn't share about the game that may actually indicate that this game is coming a lot sooner than perhaps a lot of people are anticipating. 
When I'm seeing people speculate about this game's release, people are saying 2025 and 2026 and beyond, and unless something goes terribly wrong with the development of this game, which is highly possible, now I know almost for a certainty that this game has been in production since mid to late 2019. There is a very specific reason why the Aperion KOTOR mod was shut down at the end of 2018, and that's because Lucasfilm and Disney were looking to venturing into this franchise, and they had companies pitch them over a course of time different ideas for where the future of KOTOR games would be. One company pitched them a reforged edition, which was a remaster of the original two games, and I've also heard a rumour that Obsidian actually pitched them something. There's a reason why Bethesda have the um, Indiana Jones game, and that's because Microsoft really wanted to work with Lucasfilm, so I wouldn't be surprised if the Obsidian rumour was true. And of course, Aspire pitched them the KOTOR remake. And with the success of the Resident Evil 2 remake and remakes in general at the moment, this is where Lucasfilm decided to go. Obviously, Aspire have then done their deals with Sony and stuff like that. They've got this game into the position they wanted it to be in. And as of mid to late 2019, this game has officially been in pre-production. And as of now, to my knowledge, the game is in full production. If you're wondering what exactly do these things mean, well, pre-production is essentially the pre-planning for the entire development phase. They conceptualize the vision it's essentially setting the stage for when development begins and they can go into it as seamlessly as possible and start getting the game made with everything in place to do so. So as of now, the game is in full development, so we can expect confidently a potential release date of 2024 or maybe even 2023, assuming nothing goes wrong. I said this on Twitter before, but 2023 lines up with the 20th anniversary of the original game. It didn't make the rounds the way Mr. Matty's scoops are, but you know, it's still lining up that way. And to put this into perspective, Cyberpunk 2027, which is one of the biggest games of all time, and while it had a pretty bad launch, started pre-production in 2016 and was released in 2020. So the game had four years of active development. If we put that into perspective with the KOTOR remake, it means we've already had nearly two years of active development, and Cyberpunk is vastly bigger than the KOTOR remake will be, and there's a lot more to it. And honestly, I don't think 2023 is that much of a stretch when it comes to a release date, because, you know, it would have been in development for over three years at that point, so I would expect it around then, or at least when they plan to release it, but as I said, things can change because games development is pretty hectic. But those are my thoughts on all of this news that's going around. I kind of felt left out if I didn't comment on it at all. And I wanted to know in the comment section below, what do you want to see from the combat changes that they are planning to make? Do you want to see it like Dragon Age Inquisition? Do you want to see it like God of War? Or do you want them to completely keep it the same as the original game? Let me know down in the comments below. I'm interested in hearing what everybody has to say. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to join the biggest growing KOTOR community on YouTube. And I will see you guys in the next video. But until then, may the force be with you. Always.